What up, what up, YouTube? You already know what it is. Your boy Karan from the world of Q. And guys, I just got done watching Louis C.K. Sincerely, his special, his new special. And I just want to say, if anybody was wondering if, you know, Louis C.K. would be rusty, um, would he be able to bounce back from the allegations that he um, faced a couple years back with the Me Too thing and him jerking off in front of girls, um, you know, how would he, like, all that, Louis is in, Louis C.K. is in his bag. I'm letting y'all know that right now. And any Louis C.K. fan, like, I have him in my top five all the time. But I'm not, like, the biggest fan. Like, how I am of Chappelle, like, where I follow all Chappelle's work. Like, I'm still just getting hip to, you know, fin finishing up Louis and, you know, a lot of his specials. But I already knew, like, he wasn't to be trifled with. Like, nah, he wasn't, mm-mm. Mm -mm. You don't you don't want no parts with him on them stand up streets, man. He's a beast, and just right in front of from the jump, he gets right into it. You know what I'm saying? Like Louis does a lot of dark comedy. Um, he talks about you know molestation, uh, gays, slavery, and everything. He actually kind of compared his situ that situation of sexual um, assault victims or whatever to slavery. Um, I don't want to break down his bits too much because I wanted to rewatch it. And yes, you do have to pay $7.99 for it on his website, which is very smart. But I will say to say that it's worth it is an understatement. Like this is one of the specials that I watched in a very long time outside of sticks and stones that made me laugh for almost an hour straight. You know, now you see nowadays uh, a lot of comedians are making their specials just a little bit shorter because a lot of people don't have the intention span to sit through for an hour. And also because they're just not talented enough to have an hour's worth of great or good or great material to where you can pace your, your material all the way through. A lot of comedians don't have that. And sometimes it's not because people can't sit through that. It's because it's just levels. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, outside of... You know, Dave Chappelle's and Bill Burr's. Um, I like Chris Rock's tambourine, but, you know, I didn't feel like it was on a sticks and stones or paper tiger type vibe. I felt like it was more so on the um, the bird's eye uh, equiminium or whatever it's called. I felt like it was on that level. So, uh, but it was still good. Nonetheless, I actually felt like the tambourine was better than those two that Chappelle put out. Um but yeah, like I said, C CK is in his bag, man. And it's just like like it amazes me to see someone command the room like that. Like he knew that he had the crowd eating out of the palm of his fucking hands from start to finish. And he, he actually says that too, because he says a joke. I'm not gonna say it again because I want y'all to go and watch it and support him. Um he has a joke at the end, and they're all like, whoa, oh, you know, when the audience hears something that they're not really, you know, that, that they wouldn't say, but they're cool that this comedian said it. He's like, no, no, guys, we're almost done. You were doing so good, we're almost done. Like, I like that to say, like, you know, look, I've been doing dark shit for the longest. I've been doing it for the first 45 minutes of this shit. Bear with me. We're almost done, but I'm not finished doing it. Like, I like that. Like, you know, he really commanded the room. Um, from start to finish and he didn't like the thing I like about Louis C.K. when he has a joke that audiences go like Ugh. he doesn't like who oh, he doesn't try to laugh it off like he'll sit there with a the straight face like and then follow it up like yeah so that's why preachers shouldn't be touching should be touching little boys you know like the the one joke he had at SNL about uh child molesters or uh, pedophiles is like them knowing everything that they're doing and knowing the consequence of it, it must be pretty great. Like, yo, that's a controversial fucking joke. And he did that on SNL, bruh, and got away with it. I'm not going to say got away with it, but, you know, because he did get some backlash about it. But it's like, yo, that is the testament to greatness, especially with comedians. Like, and I think, uh, I think Andrew Schultz compared it to kind of like being, uh, you know, the matador and the bull where you can kind of get just close enough and then boom, and then the bull is going right through it and you're getting ready for that routine again. Like he can walk that line from being offensive and downright dis disrespectful, disgusted and all that to just being like, wow, that was that was brilliant. That was that was genius what he just did. Like, you know, I, I felt myself kind of being in awe. Like he's just he was just stringing them shits together. And I'm like, God, like. In this day and age, especially what he did, and like he owned up to it, like you know, I will say this because it's not big. It's just like yo, we all have our shit. Y'all just found out what my shit is. I'm jealous of y'all because we don't know what your shit is, which is true. Like we we look, did he 
what he did was fucking weird. It was creepy. He's a pervert. But he's also a comedic genius. I'm sorry. You know, like, I don't think he's an amazing person or anything. But we're talking about strictly his his mastery of the fucking art because he's a master of the art, bro. Like, he is the modern-day George Carlin. And that's not even a stretch to say that, like, CK is one of the goats, like, just a god of comedy, so to speak. Like, you know, I read a book by Malcolm Gladwell about, you know, the, the outliers. Re, uh, 10,000 hours for before you get uh, to being, like, a guru or a master at your craft and like you could tell he reached them 10,000 hours years ago like he's just toying with like it's it's like when i watch those great comedians and just someone who's just truly great at what they do it's like when someone makes it look easy that usually comes from years and years and years of just beating your craft over and over and over like when michael jordan makes a fade away for the buzzer beater look easy and just like, that's what you see from Chappelle, CK, Rock, um, Bill Burr. Like, you know, I see that from Kevin Hart, even though I didn't really think, like, his last special was his best. But you just see that, like, it's, like, it's it's, ama it's, it's crazy to just watch that shit, bro. Like, I caught myself not even laughing sometimes, but really just watching his presence on the stage and how he was just making eye contact with every mate. He made everybody in the audience feel like I'm looking directly at you. I'm making this joke with you. This is a conversation. This is not me doing stand-up. This is just a conversation between me and you. And that's one thing I was like, yo, this man is legendary at what he does. You know, so uh, like I said, like, guys, I'm not going to keep y'all here too long. I recommend this special to anybody that's interested in stand-up comedy. Look, if you are going to watch this special and then think like the moment you hear some some dark crude shit, you I'm I'm offended. I'm gonna turn it off. Just don't watch it. But if you really want to sit down and laugh, especially with the times we're going through now, and that's why he dropped it. He said people need to laugh at this time, um, which is true. Um, like, bro, if you're looking for a, a great time for an hour to kill the time for an hour, a great laugh. Man, if you got it, toss that seven ninety nine right into that bucket, right into the cart, add to the cart, and yo, enjoy yourself, man. This is, this is one. This is this is one of those. I like. I really enjoyed this, and I'm gonna watch it again later on today. <laughs> so once again, yo guys, I give this a four and a half out of five stars. Um, CK, he, he did his thing, man. Like I said, he was in his bag from start to finish. So. Like I said, I'm looking forward to more stand-ups coming out later on this year. You know, hopefully, I think I think Rock is bubbling up something, man. I think he's about to drop a he's about to drop a banger because I I know he's a competitor, so it's like I don't know him personally, but you know, when you're that great, like you're a competitor. You want them to all do good, but you also want yourself to be like, look, I'm in this sentence too. You know, see him uh, sticks and stones, paper tiger. Now, sincerely, man, listen. Um, so, like I said, guys, yo. Once again, your boy Karan from the world of Q. Guys, yo, leave a comment down below what y'all thought about this special. Um, if y'all thought I was tripping, if y'all agree with me, yo, we out.